Hey Pre-K, it's time for the next chapter of The Dragons of Blue Land. Chapter 8, To Spiky Mountain Range. Where are we going to rest tomorrow? asked Elmer, biting off a corner of the chocolate bar to help him stay awake. I'm trying to get all the way to Spiky Mountain Range, said the dragon. No more Mr. Wagon Meal for me if I can help it. He's awful. A searchlight! Ah! interrupted Elmer as a beam of light shot up from below, lighting up the dragon's gold-colored wings. It's from that ship, Elmer. They saw me last night, too. Hold on tight. I'm going to try to dodge it, yelled the dragon, swooping, diving up and down and swerving from side to side. Elmer grabbed the dragon's neck and held on as hard as he could. He didn't dare open his eyes, but he could hear men shouting on the ship, Right! Move to the right! Faster! Faster! Left now! Hey, I think something's riding, whatever it is! It looks like a boy! shouted another man. And then the moon slipped behind the cloud bank, and the dragon escaped the beam of light and flew frantically through the darkness, while the light danced over the sky, still looking for them. Good work, said Elmer, feeling dizzy and quite sick. But they saw both of us, moaned the dragon. That's all right. They don't know where we're going, and we'll have your whole family rescued by the time they decide where we are, said Elmer, wondering if it would be wiser to finish eating his chocolate bar now or later. He was feeling a bit sickish. Oh, I hope you're right, muttered the baby dragon doubtfully. On and on they flew until at dawn they were over Seaweed Bay and due east lookout. The dragon swung westward over Seaweed City and landed in a forest on Spiky Mountain Range. He was so tired that he fell asleep before he had time for a drink of water. Elmer finished his chocolate bar, ate another, and a whole box of Fig Newtons. Then he drank from the mountain stream and curled up beside the sleeping dragon. Luckily, they didn't know who had seen them over in Seaweed City. Ever since Mr. Wagonwheel had glimpsed the dragon Thursday, he had been trying to persuade his neighbors that he really had seen a big blue demon. No one believed a word of his story, but he had bothered the whole town so much that they had to report it to the Seaweed City Police. He had planned to go on Sunday, but changed his mind in the middle of Saturday night. He woke Mrs. Wagonwheel. You take care of the morning milking, and I'll be back in time for dinner. I'm taking the horse and wagon, but said Mrs. Wagonwheel. I'm off, said Mr. Wagonwheel, and Mrs. Wagonwheel heard the kitchen door slam behind him. So at dawn, just as he was trotting through the outskirts of Seaweed City, Mr. Wagonwheel looked up in the sky to see what sort of day it was going to be, and he nearly fell out of his seat. The blue demon, he screamed, with a boy or, or something riding on its back. He looked around wildly for someone to show it to, but nobody was in sight. And by the time he reached the police station and had found someone to listen to him, Elmer and the dragon were safely hidden in the forests of Spiky Mountain Range. And guess what? You get an extra special treat today because we are going to read Chapter 9, which is called Blue Land. Elmer and the dragon dozed on until late afternoon. They were both impatient to be off, but as Elmer said, we'll only spoil everything by getting there before it's dark enough. So they waited and rested and drank cool mountain water. The dragon munched ferns while Elmer ate his third chocolate bar. Oh, I can't stand it any longer, said the dragon, jumping up and shaking out his wings. All right, all right, said Elmer, let's go. He put on his knapsack and climbed onto the dragon's back. They walked to the clearing in the woods and the dragon took off across awful desert. It was hot over the sands, and even in the late afternoon, and Elmer crouched over to hide from the burning winds. The dragon panted for air, but flew faster and faster, hardly daring to think what might have happened since he left. He kept muttering, If only the sandstorms would start up! Where are the sandstorms? That would make the men leave us alone! When they came to the dry, rocky slopes of Blue Land, the sun was low on the horizon, and they knew it would soon be dark inside the circle of mountains. Keep a sharp lookout! warned the dragon as they picked their way through the boulders. They may have men almost anywhere. Up, 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 they went slowly and quietly, and at last reached the gap between the peaks, and Elmer gasped at the sight below. The beautiful meadows, meadows of blue land shone bright green, dotted with patches of snapdragons glowing white in the dimming light, and at the center of the lake, water reflected the pink of the sky. Suddenly it was gone into darkness as the sun set. But the dragon had been straining to see across the lake, and suddenly he grabbed Elmer for joy. <gasps> the men! The men! I saw the men! And they're still standing outside the cave with the net! Maybe we're not too late! He hurried Elmer down to the giant's, to the 
giant snapdragon bush which hid the entrance to the little tunnel. I don't think they found it yet, he whispered happily as he pulled aside the roots and rocks. Neither do I, agreed Elmer, looking all around to be sure he'd remember the spot. And then he took off his knapsack and unpacked one whistle, one horn, a flashlight, and a ball of string. Lower your neck so I can measure the strings for your whistle and horn, he said, getting out his jackknife. Why do I have to have them on strings, asked the dragon. I don't want you to drop them. If the men never see them, maybe they'll never guess what happened. The dragon laughed and tried out the strings to make sure he could reach the horn and the whistle easily. They're fine, he said. Now I'll wait here until you tell me it's time. Look, the men are building a campfire. They must be having supper. So much the better, said Elmer, as he started down into the tunnel with his knapsack. But how will your family know I'm your friend? Tell them Boris sent you. Boris! Is that your name? Yes, said Boris uncomfortably. I was embarrassed to tell you before. It's no worse than Elmer, said Elmer. I suppose not, and it's certainly not so bad as some of them in my family. I might as well tell you the rest. My sisters are Ingeborg, Eustacia, Gertrude, Bertha, Mildred, and Hildegard. And my brothers are Emile, Horatio, Conrad, Jerome, Willem, Dagobert, and Egmont. Can you imagine? But hurry, I can't wait to hear what's been happening to all of them. Once inside the tunnel, Elmer snapped on his flashlight and shot it over the damp walls. The ceiling was high enough so that he could walk easily. Down, down, down he went, around the curves and through the small rooms, and then more narrow tunnels until at last he came to the place where the dragon had gotten stuck. He heard scratching and scraping noises, and he knew he must be very close to the dragon family. It's Elmer Elevator, Boris's friend, he whispered as bravely as he could. Who? the dragons asked. Elmer Elevator, and Boris's friend. Boris is out at the entrance to the tunnel, and I've come to rescue you. Turn off your light and come in, whispered another voice, and Elmer walked slowly into the darkness. He stopped and felt himself surrounded by huge forms breathing excitedly. We can't tell you how grateful we are, said the gigantic dragon mother. Never mind that, whispered the father. What's your plan and how can we help? We're almost starved to death. Oh, I have some chocolate bars, said Elmer generously, giving away his last three. Here, I'll open them up for you. They divided each into five pieces. I'm afraid it's not much, but it ought to help a little. He held his flashlight inside the knapsack and divided up the chocolate as he explained the plan. They all chuckled low, dra dragon chuckles, and began to feel much better. Then Elmer made string necklaces for horns and whistles for all the dragons and carefully tied them around each dragon's neck. He wanted to take a really good look at the tremendous family, but they were near the entrance to the cave and he had to keep the flashlight in the knapsack. As he took out his cap pistol, he asked, Do you know how heavy the net is and how it's fastened across the entrance? No, answered the dragon father. Well, I'd better look, said Elmer. He quietly crept up towards the net, but the men were sitting close by, and he didn't dare get close enough to see it well. We'll have to trust our luck, he told the dragons, as he started back through the tunnel to Boris. And that is the end of chapter 9. Tomorrow we will read chapter 10. Chapter 10 is called Escape. Now, before we read this next chapter tomorrow, I want you to take a minute and think, hmm, what do you think the plan is that Elmer and the dragon have come up with? It has something to do with whistles, and it has something to do with a cat pistol, and it has something to do with the net. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. Before we start reading tomorrow, I want you to share your prediction with a brother or a sister or a grown-up or a fur animal pet, and then at the end of the chapter, you can see if your prediction was right. Until then, goodbye.